Value simply refers to how light or dark is your paint. If you say that some paint is high value, it means that it's really light. Naturally, some colors have higher value and some colors have lower value. But we are not here to talk about that. We are here to talk about value sketching. The most simple form of value sketching to differentiate reflections and shades is a zenithal highlight. What is even better is using an airbrush to pick out all the reflections on exposed parts. However, the best, but also the most time-consuming approach is sketching all the values using a paintbrush. Okay, but why would you even bother doing this? Since all these methods work with values, it will make your miniatures look better because you'll be able to tell where are the highlights and where are the shades. In the end, you get a miniature with proper contrast that's easily readable for your eyes. Starting with the easiest one, zenithal highlight simply assumes that the light source is above the miniature and so you spray everything with white from above. This might be better than nothing solution, but not all things reflect light the same way. What I like more is taking a miniature that has been primed with black and putting it against a light source. Now I would recommend for you to take a photo of your miniature so you can see all the reflections. Usually one photo from the front and back is enough, but once you see how it's done, you can do value sketching without a photo. All of these spots should be lighter than darker ones. And now you see how different shapes reflect the light, which is different from zenithal highlight. The other two options for better quality over zenithal is to either pick an airbrush and spray the most obvious reflections or sketch everything with a paintbrush. If you do use an airbrush, you want to cover all of the exposed parts just a little bit so there is some grey, but the most prominent reflections should be almost white. It takes some practice, but once you have proper distribution of midtones, meaning grey areas, and highlights, meaning almost white areas, you can spray some contrast paints or inks for super quick and effective paint job. Of course, you still have to proceed carefully, but the result you get is very vibrant. If you do have enough time, you get the best result with a paintbrush. You still wanna find all of those reflections first before you start painting. When you find them, either apply your main highlight color or cover those reflections with white first. If you decide to cover them with white, it might be actually better for some colors, since you get better coverage and saturation, which is especially useful for yellow, for example. Once you covered the main reflections, we will start applying all the colors. As always, this might take more than one layer, since you want to use paint that is thin enough so you won't get lumpy in consistent finish. For metallic parts I am still using very light paint because you need high contrast to make non-metallic metal. For other stuff that is not as reflective, using a bit darker colors will work as well. Once you get it, it's time to layer down some midtones. You can either create your own mixes between darker paints and your highlight color or you can simply use pre-mixed paints so you don't have to worry about ratios. And how many tones do you need? For smaller miniatures, one highlight, two to three different midtones and one shade is enough. But if you are painting bigger scale, like I am doing right now, you might want to add more. The process now is exactly the same. You put the lightest midtone right under the highlight everywhere you see. Once again, you might have to apply it in multiple thin layers. Try to be precise and don't get your midtone into the highlight, but if it happens a little bit, it's not a big deal. You do the same thing with other midtones and shades. This step is very easy for parts like this cape, but for armor and other metallic or glossy parts, you also have to sketch some counter reflections. These aren't as obvious. So you can either imagine what would reflections look like from other angles or you can simply leave some space between them and the main reflections. This is another necessary element to make something look metallic, since not only are there reflections from the main light source, but the material reflects light from the environment as well. You don't wanna start with your highlight color for this, rather use something like your second midtone, because these reflections are not as bright. When you get this sort of zebra effect, we can finally start blending. There are multiple blending methods, so if you want rough and textured finish, you could go for stippling. You might also try wet blending by applying each of the layers right next to each other again and use a zigzag motion to make a gradient while the paint is still active. If the layers are spread enough, you could also pick darker color and go over them with an airbrush. However, the most precise blending is done with glazing. I will take my highlight color and thin it down with water to make a glaze. This shouldn't be too thin so you are not just using dirty water, but at the same time it should be very transparent. Now I will glaze my highlight color into the first midtone. My brush is barely touching the surface of the transition, so this is gonna take a while, but after carefully glazing between the layers, you'll get a very smooth blend. Like this, I am taking the first midtone and glazing it into the second midtone. You are gonna glaze all lighter layers into the darker ones because they are more transparent, which helps in this case. After blending all the layers like this, you can see that we got a really nice and vibrant result. However, if you wanna further learn about blending, you can either watch my video on glazing which is very precise, or wet blending, which is super fast. And see you there!